You're listening to King Jesus Radio, the official podcast of New Living Way Church. You can stream all Sunday services, Wednesday night Bible studies, and much more. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Welcome to Bible study. Welcome to Bible study. We're here today. Amen. And for those that will be joining with us online as well, looking forward to the teaching tonight as we continue through the word of God and just uh, seeking the Lord together today. So we're going to open up in a word of prayer tonight. And um, just uh, everybody's wondering, the scripture tonight is Matthew chapter one, verse 18 through 25. And uh, the title tonight is Jesus. Amen. Taken from the scripture as well. So we'll be studying together in this today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor, Lord God. We thank you for this wonderful, beautiful day and this beautiful night. We thank you, Father God, for another day of your faithfulness, another day of your love, another day of your grace and your mercies. We thank you for the joy of the Lord is our strength, my God, and we thank you, Heavenly Father. For God, you are such a good God, Lord, such a wonderful Father, such a wonderful Savior, Lord. And Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you had a plan to send your Son, Jesus, into the world to die for the sins of the world that we may have life in you today, Lord God. And Jesus, you did not stay in that grave, but you rose again on the third day, Lord, proving that you have all the power and all the authority, Lord God, to lay your life down and to raise it back up again, Lord. So we are grateful today, my God. It's because of that faith today that we are standing in you, Lord God, as your word calls us to be holy and to be righteous in you, Lord. And as your word says that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, Lord. Lord, we thank you today, Father God, for that great love that keeps us, that holds us, that encourages us, that strengthens us, that helps us, Lord, through every trial, through every tribulation, Father God, through every up and down, Lord Jesus. And Father God, we are just so grateful and so thankful to you, Lord God, because, Lord, we know that you are the fulfillment of all scripture, Lord, that the very word is you, Lord, and points to you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you that through your word, we're able to know you more, Heavenly Father. So tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we come together, Lord, with hearts that are open, hearts that, Father God, are seeking you, Lord, as your word commands us to seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, and your word says, and all these things will be added unto us as well. And we believe, Father God, that those things are added unto us, Lord, are the things that we need, that we're equipped with, Father, the things that we're praying for, my God, the things we're standing and believing for, my God, and Lord, but it comes through seeking you first, Lord, and your kingdom and your righteousness, Father. So, Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus, we come together as your disciples, Lord, as your children, as your servants, my God, as those that have been saved and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, Heavenly Father. We come together tonight and we ask you for the forgiveness of our sins. We repent of all unrighteousness and cleanliness in our thoughts, our actions, our words. Father God, our, our hearing, Lord Jesus, our eyes, every part of us, Lord God, and within our heart, Lord God. For as your word says, from out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, Father. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we could come boldly and confidently before you in confession of our sins, Lord. We repent of any pride or self-righteousness, Lord God. And Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for the forgiveness of our sins, and we also forgive as we ourselves have been forgiven in you, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time together today. We thank you for bringing forth your word tonight, Lord. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for just being so faithful and so wonderful, Lord, through it all, my God. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. It is not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. And Lord Jesus, as we come together today, our goal, our mission, our focus is knowing you more, Lord. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, we know that it is by your spirit, Lord. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that lives within us, lives through us, Lord, and is with us in in this place today, Father God. And for all those that are joining together, watching with us today, Lord, we thank you that we are one in you, Lord. We have unity in you today, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that it is, Father, by your Spirit, Lord, that you have drawn us together, Lord. And it is that very Spirit within inside of us, the Holy Spirit, that cries out, Abba, Father, reminding us that we are your children, Lord. And Father God, we thank you tonight, Lord, for that peace, for that comfort, for that strength, and for your love, my God. We love you and we praise you this night, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Amen. 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 <laughs> well, praise God. Well, welcome everybody tonight to Bible study. <laughs> Sliding door. Oh, the passenger? No, the sliding door. The other passenger. Oh, the, 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 the one behind the driver. No, the other one. The one behind the passenger one. The sliding door on the passenger side. Really? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, good thing they caught it. Amen. Oh, Praise God that they caught it. Amen. I think you're inside your car. How did I open that door? Probably just pressed the button by mistake. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, amen. Well, good to see you guys. Good to see you, Sister Liz. And, we see everybody here tonight and all of you joining with us online. We see you here with Missy Two, Sister Karen, and uh, we're just grateful to be here tonight. Amen. So coffee's ready. Coffee's ready there. So go for it. Amen. Um, and just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, we we do don't know services Friday, but Sunday morning prayer at 915 and then 1045 services. We continue in the book of Zechariah. So we're continuing to just seek the Lord through through the book of uh, Zechariah as well. And then our service at 1045 as well. So looking forward to that. Amen. And uh, just really looking forward to what the Lord is doing and we'll continue to do as we study along through the word of god today so um you know it's just a beautiful day a beautiful night and we're gonna we'll start to prepare to open up our scripture tonight so we can turn our bibles to matthew uh chapter one as we as we begin tonight so we're going to be looking at matthew chapter one and we're going to be looking at 18 verse 18 through 25 tonight amen and we'll give uh we'll make sure that sis sister's uh van door is closed over there make sure everything's okay everything okay sister yeah. all right awesome amen you're looking out, brother. Yeah, the wrong button. Instead of pressing the lock, press the sliding door. You don't know something, or like the door's wide open. Well, you guys caught it, so praise God for it. Does anybody have a testimony or just want to give the Lord a shout? Scripture upon your heart tonight as we get started tonight. Anything you just want to just share tonight? Amen. Amen. Not yet. Not yet. Anybody in the chat board as well? Feel free to throw some, you know, on the chat as well. Scripture that comes to mind. Anything on there? I we just, definitely wanted to say. It. I just um, we went to Vegas over the weekend. Okay. Because it was my it was my birthday, my son my husband's birthday and my son Eddie um took him to Vegas. But my husband never wants to go anywhere if I don't go with him. Okay. Um, I was really like, you know, I always feel kind of guilty going to Vegas. But we were talking, we were, I was, I don't know, but I feel like the, 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 the how do you say, the environment? Uh-huh. Well, it might be the same, but it doesn't, it didn't look like the same. Uh-huh. Like before, there was a lot of, Things going on, uh, like naked women and all that kind of stuff, uh -huh. right? On the streets and passing things, you know. This time it was like nothing, and I was like telling my husband, "That's good. That's good because it's now like you feel like walking on the streets and having to be very careful of what you see, or because not this time anymore." And okay. I was like, hmm, that's good. <laughs> Still, you know? Amen. And, and Amen. then uh, the billboards, these big billboards, right? They huge. And I, that, the, that, you know, that ministry, he gets us. Yes, I think it's, yeah. Have you seen, I've seen the commercials, yeah. The commercials, uh -huh. he gets us. They have billboards like commercials everywhere, like Jesus doesn't, <laughs> Jesus didn't hate, he washed feet. Uh -huh. And they have different, oh, you know, wow. different ones. Like there's this priest washing uh, a gay guy feet, mm -hmm. his feet, and then this other lady washing someone else's feet, and a white, uh, a black person washing a white person's feet. It's different, but right. But the message was that Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't hate he he washed feet, mm -hmm. and I was like, hmm. God, I like this because they're. Yeah, definitely. You know, the Lord can reach anybody reaching, anywhere, right? Out, yes. Amen. Amen. And, I'm like, That's good. and we have the Holy Spirit with us everywhere we go. Amen. So, yes, you know, and we and, can go and, then, uh, and enjoy the time that God has given us, right? And then uh, on Sunday, I, I stayed in my. Well, I must. Um, 
we go out and eat and you know go to the stores and but I stay at the hotel and I for the service. Oh, okay. <laughs> and everybody was looking for me. So where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Down here. Oh yeah, we saw you online with us. We did see you online with us. I was, I said, I'm, I'm up, I'm up. <laughs> and they were like, what are you doing there? I said, I'm, I'm in church. And, uh, Praise God. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> They're like, don't tell her anything. Leave her, leave her. She's I good. Said, and I felt like, Jesus, you're everywhere. So Praise you God. Amen. 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 Should have put on the chat, giving a shout out from Vegas. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise God. Well, welcome back. Glad you had a great time and you're, you're back with us today and, uh, and that you're able to join us as well. Amen. That's that's the blessing of the online ministry as well as this live stream um, that many are still able to join us, you know, even when they're not able to be here. Amen. So especially for those tonight that are watching with us, that's sitting with us tonight. So. Praise God. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, just welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here tonight. And uh, we're going to get started tonight. Amen. So uh, Matthew chapter one, verse 18 through 25. And just a quick little background. Again, we've been going through the book. We're starting the book of Matthew as we have been going through the book of Revelation before this. And the last one we ended up with how, you know, Jesus is worthy to take the scrolls. Amen. So we're going back to Matthew now to look at scriptural, why it shows and proves that he is worthy to take those scrolls amen how he's the fulfillment of all the old testament prophecies and all the promises of god and he is the very word of god amen so we're definitely getting to see these things you know we saw it through the genealogy last week and today we're going to now look at the actual more as we go into the actual conception of jesus amen so we're going to be looking at these scriptures tonight i do have quite a bit of scripture here i'm not sure if we're going to hit everything some footnotes different things like that um you know questions or input comments i will be asking if you can read as well and uh, we'll, we'll we'll get into the word together, amen. 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 Praise God. So we're going to read. We're going to read from eighteen to twenty-five, and it says, "Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way: when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying." Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. So this is our portion of scripture tonight that we're going to be looking at today. Amen. Well, Father, we just thank you for your word, Lord God, and I just ask you, Lord, to bring forth your word for what you are speaking and teaching to us tonight. Father, let it be your words and not my own, Lord. And Father God, today as we receive your word, Lord, that we ask you that it falls on good ground and that you will bring about the fruits for which is intended, Father God. And Lord Jesus, that we will be able to walk this word out, Lord God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Father God, we just thank you today, Lord Jesus, that we're going to hear what you are speaking to us as a church today, Lord. Father God, as your children today, Lord, not what we think it should say or what we want to hear, but Lord Jesus, what you are truly saying, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for your beautiful word tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I want us to really, you know, we've seen so many movies, so many cards, so many, you know, so many things out there, right? I mean, uh, you can watch all these Hallmark movies and they all talk about the nativity. They talk about all these different things. Um, you got so many different, and they're all beautiful pictures, and they're very true. It's a very beautiful, this is a very beautiful portion of Scripture. But we can also know that it can also be very real. Because sometimes we kind of look at the Bible like it's this, oh. But when you're dealing with people, there's not always a, oh. It just doesn't happen, right? I mean, is there's some real stuff here. And so as we look at the Scriptures today, I don't want you to be afraid to see the realness in it, okay, of the people and the news and the responses that are being done. We know it all worked out, amen? We know that they believe God and everything like that, but we got to take into consideration where Joseph was in this time, how Mary must have looked, 
and the situation that they're in here. So that's what we're going to be looking at today as we continue the scripture today. Amen. And, as, and actually, as we go through the through the word as well, you know, we just we're going to see it from the point of view as of definitely asking God to teach us, but at the same time being able to see the realness of the scripture and the the emotions behind it. You know, Lord, we're asking to help us to see this today because how many of us know that we deal with real emotions? Yeah. You know, we have ways that how we see people or how people see us, right? Yeah. You know, maybe because of a certain way we talk or a certain way we dress or a certain way we think or maybe certain places we go, you know, certain places we, you know, or, or whatever it may be, everybody always has an opinion, right? It's, 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 or an idea or maybe an, a way that they think you need to be. But how many of us know our only concern is how he wants us to be, yes. who he created us to be, who he chose us to be. Amen. And it's, it's that's the matter of it. Now, through those changes, now people start to see that change. But it comes from the inside out because that's what God is concerned. It's a matter of our heart. So we're going to look right here in uh, verse 18 and we're going to look at this first verse and we're going to break it down a little bit. But let's let's read it again. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. So let's hold our place here in Matthew, but we're going to turn to Luke chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 26 and 27, and then we're going to, we're going to come right back over here to uh, Matthew. But you might want to hold your place there because we're going to come back here a couple times, or maybe one more time. We're going to look at Luke chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse 26 to 27. And it says here, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a, to, the, to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. So this happens before this portion of scripture we're reading here. This is what's taking place. This is unfolding, but Joseph is not here. This is Mary, and the angel is appearing to Mary in this place, but not Joseph. And we see here that it does name say that she is betrothed to a man named Joseph. So it does mention him, but he's not there. So this is a personal experience for Mary. It's a beautiful experience. I mean, when you, as we continue to read on it a bit, we're going to see just, I mean, this is, this could be a very fearful moment, you know, as Zechariah had it and, you know, previously in that when he found out they were going to have John, you know, he was scared. He was terrified. I mean, who is this angel that's appearing before me, man? Am I, you're going to take me out or what's going to happen? Like this, is this a friendly visit? Even Mary's concerned, but we get to see how beautiful it is. But again, it's a personal experience. It's not something that Joseph is experiencing with her. This is something between her and God and the messenger that has been sent on behalf of the Lord to give this news. So there's going to be times that God will speak to you in a certain way, that God will show you something, that God will help you with something, but it's only for you. You can share with other people and they may look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> they may look at you like even I'm talking about brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, OK. Yeah, sure. Sure. OK. Yeah. All right. All right. Or maybe they just, but they we just don't get it. And I'll say we because there's going to be times that you may share something with me and I just, I don't get it. But that's okay because you do. Yeah. And it was for you. And that moment with the Lord was for you and you alone. To share it is one thing. But to expect everybody to have the same joy and, and response as you have, it's not always going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ever have that happen? You're so happy about some news and you tell them and there's like, oh, that's cool. What? Like, you know, it's like it kind of brings you down because you want them to have that same joy. You know, it's like, man, and they don't have it. But we can't let them. We can't let that rob the joy that we have, the excitement that we have, because we are still happy about it. It's still a great thing. And even when God does something, maybe not everybody will respond the same way. But don't let that rob you from the joy from the encounter you had with God. And if somebody understands it, praise the Lord. If they don't understand it, that's okay. Praise the Lord. Because that's how personal our God is. And so right here we're seeing Mary. She's having a personal encounter with this angel sent by God as a messenger to give her this news. So, but again, Joseph is not there. So let's turn our Bibles back to verse 1 of, um, I'm sorry, verse 18 of Matthew chapter 1. 
And so to be betrothed was different from engagement. Parents would choose a young man for the woman to be engaged to. This was the first stage of preparation for marriage. This was the first stage. They would find the young man and then they would say, okay, I'm going to give my daughter. And this was all planned out for this couple to come together. The women, the girls were usually pretty young as well. The second stage was the official arraignments in prenuptial, uh, prenuptial agreement and also making a legal, legal binding contract. Basically, they were married without having sex. That's pretty much what it was. So all the, you know, everything was there as far as the marriage. So it's stronger than an engagement. You know, there was no bachelor party when you were betrothed. <laughs> you're, you're married already. This is basically, you already have the legal document. So to be betrothed, the only way out of that was either to die or to divorce because it was already legally binding. So this, so when, he's, when they're saying he's betrothed to marry, to go outside of that betrothed, to be betrothed would be considered adultery. It's the same as if they were married. So it's, it's kind of a tough stage. You know, many people say, well, wait till marriage. Well, imagine they say, well, wait till after, you know, the betro you know, you're betrothed, you know, however long that could be. So this is a place that they are in now. So as I said, it's considered adultery at this point outside the relationship. And the only way they could get away to, to get out of it was to be divorced or to, to die, basically. And then the third step through that was the actual marriage. And then the marriage is where they would actually come together and have sex, you know, sleep together, be together. This would cons you know, consummate the marriage. This would bring them together as one. So that was basically what they waited for in part of the marriage. But everything's already pretty much done. So they're in this middle stage. They're in this place to be that they're betrothed to one another. And so this is pretty much what was going on. This is the time and the season. You think about it, it's like, God, why would you choose that moment? You couldn't, you know, wait till after they were married. You couldn't wait till before they were married or they were betrothed. No, God chose this moment that she would be untouched, that she was supposed to be unkept, but yet she still belonged to, to someone. It, you know, if that's me and you, we're like, that doesn't make sense, God. <laughs> I'm just, it's, it's an example, right? Don't yeah. strike me down. But you know, it's, it's one of those things, it's just like, it's, it's a real place. But how, how many of us know that God doesn't wait for the perfect time, he chooses the right time. And anything that he chooses to do is in that right time. Many times we're looking at God, God, after all this, and then you're going to add this? God, you're going to start working this in me now? Are you serious? Like, you see what's going on. You see the place I'm in. You see the position I'm in. You see where I'm mentally, physically, emotionally. You see where I'm at. Financially, whatever it may be. And yet, you're going to choose to do this work now. You're going to choose to speak to me now. You're going to choose to do this now. But God's always on time. Amen? Amen. God is always on time. So let's now let's go back to Luke chapter uh, chapter one. We're going to go read the rest of those, these verses here. We'll come back to Matthew right now. We're going to look at verse 28 through 45. And then I'm going to start opening up for you guys. Help me read some scriptures over here. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Luke chapter one, we're going to read verse 28 through 45. It says, and he came to her and said, greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the same and trying to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, behold... I am your servant. I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Beautiful portion there. Amen. I truly believe that's when she conceived is when she put that faith in there. You know, 
And the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Beautiful. I mean, what an awesome testimony and miracle that just took place here with Mary. She goes with Elizabeth for about three months. She's gone. And so imagine this, right? Joseph's betrothed to her, right? She takes off for three months. And then she comes back pregnant. <laughs> I mean, hey. uh, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> still, and still wearing the virgin clothes right. or whatever. You know, it's like, okay. Sure. Right, three months. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. I mean, that's just, let's be real. You know, that doesn't, that, you know. Do yeah, do the math. Exactly. Right? It's like, what? You, you, you were pregnant when you left. <laughs> like, what happened here? So, I mean, this is, it's a beautiful story. It's beautiful to read, but the reality of it is it's hard to, like, imagine being in the place of Joseph. Mm -hmm. Being in the place of the family. Being in just in the town. Just, yeah, and Mary. How am I going to explain this? Like, she's believing God, and she's receiving this, but again, how is she going to explain this? Yeah. How is she going to get this out of there? I mean, it's not like you could hide it. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, she's already she's already starting to show. I mean, you know, she's getting that that glow of the pregnant woman. I mean, it's just like you know, not only she's carrying the son of God, and you know, it's like praise God. You know, it says that you know John leaped in his mother's womb when you know he, she heard the, the voice of Mary. That's that's so amazing, you know. But again, this is some some this is a hard place to be in for Mary. And she's only fourteen. Yeah, exactly. She's a baby. Even then, that's even harder. You know, some believe like 15, 16, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's anywhere around those age. She was young. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because she accepted her. She received her. Yeah, because they, but again, because they had a miracle. Yes. But back then, that was the normal age. Yeah. But I mean, it, Joseph knew very well he had never been with her. You see. <laughs> but imagine how you can explain to your husband, oh, we're having a 1,000%, 1,000%. <laughs> and what were the people saying, right? Yeah. She wasn't even there. But now that you say that, you know, it's, it's you know, you said that she was received by, by Elizabeth, right? Which was very comforting. She wasn't rejected. Wow. We see that as in a sense because they had a miracle themselves. The angel spoke to Zechariah. And so, therefore, it's like this miracle is taking place, even though he couldn't speak, but maybe he was able to translate somehow. So she was accepted. Yeah. So could that scripture that says, I send him my messenger before you prepare to prepare the way. So even in that sense, John is already preparing the way to receive the Messiah because right. it allowed Mary to be accepted with Elizabeth and that family because it was already preparing the way for Jesus. So even in even in. In the womb, John was already paving the way for Jesus. Wow. So that's amazing. I never saw it that way, but when you said that and you started bringing that up, I was like, I didn't see that before. That's that's some that's some really cool stuff. For man, scripture goes even deeper. Yeah, I believe that that was just another confirmation for Mary to be able to accept what she had just seen with her eyes with the angel, and just for the confirmation of like. The comforting of knowing that okay, this is going to happen. This is, <laughs> this is God ordained. So I think that it was also for Mary, just for her to be able to believe, continue to believe, her faith to continue to grow. Amen. That's right. Because I mean, is it possible she could have been afraid to go back home? Right. Is her cousin. Yeah. She was the wife of a high priest. Yeah, that too. You got. He's got. Yeah, he's a high priest. I mean, you know, do you, now you got a family member that you know. It's, it's, yeah, that can definitely affect, you know, he's in ministry and it's like, dude, I don't want this to taint, you know, but again, because of the vision, 
he could understand it. You had something to say? Yeah, I think, and it comes along, right? Like, I'm asking you to say something. Like, it, it gave her hope, mm -hmm. right? Like, to keep on going. Like, yeah. she couldn't do what everybody else was doing, right? It's like she went away, like, you know, to enjoy that time, right? And to be separated. You know, wow. and they would, I, I'm i sure they would talk about the word because of her, you know, yeah. together and to be in that environment, you know, it was like the perfect place for them to nurture him. Amen. You know, even in the womb. Even in the womb. Even in the womb. You know, and as, as we're and as we're talking, as you guys are talking and sharing all this, you know what it gives me a picture of it? It really gives me a picture of how much, so we've, we're here today because we had an encounter with God, right? God, we had an encounter with Jesus. Yes. That's what we're saved today, because we personally had an encounter with Jesus today. And that is one thing we could all relate and we come in unity about, because we all know that we had an encounter with Jesus. Yes. Different lives, different backgrounds, different trials, tribulations, but we all had an encounter with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when we share about Jesus, like we can relate to one another because we get it, as opposed to somebody that doesn't know the Lord yet, or is still, you know, still getting there into that place. But for those that know the Lord, it's like we can relate. But what's beautiful about that is, is we see, like you said, they helped her. They encouraged her. That to me is just a beautiful picture of the body of Christ that's supposed to nurture, that's supposed to comfort, that's supposed to, when it doesn't make sense, but be able to come alongside and not tear down or what the heck. Or the, no, hey, bring each other up. Help each other to feel welcomed. Because we don't know what that individual is going through. We don't know the struggle that that individual has. You know, whether it's an addiction, whether it's whatever it may be. But why are we going to tear someone down when we need to help lift each other up? Because we don't understand the work that God is doing through their life. It's just as no one can really truly understand what the work God's doing through our lives. So I like that picture that's being brought out here. It's just such a beautiful place because through the beautiful story to the realness, we see the beauty of reality that can be brought of God in real life. And that's what God does to our lives today, not just in the church, but in the world today, because we're called to be a light and encouragement. And so this is, this is some good stuff here. I'm really enjoying this. Thank you guys. I wanted to say, and then it also says that it was through the power of the Holy Spirit. So mm -hmm. You can just see how, how the Holy Spirit had a lot to do with it. Yeah, you know, definitely. It's just like as believers, when we come to the Lord, we get baptized by the Holy Spirit. So that's how we are able to encourage one another and come together and <laughs> allow God to use our lives to pour into other people's lives. Amen. Amen. That's right. Yeah, the Holy Spirit was definitely at work there, huh? Yeah. But even if, like, for us women, when we are pregnant, we, we, um, there's a bond, right? And as the baby is growing, we can feel it. Like, it's like it, it's like it's already out. But no, it's inside. So it's, it's even it's growing that connection. So what comes to my mind is even when he was inside her womb, God is with her. Amen. Even though she was going, she must have been feeling the peace. Because when I like when I was pregnant with my kids, and sometimes I would feel kind of like scared, especially my firstborn son. Yeah. It's it, but then I feel his warmth that like somehow <laughs> I feel like he embrace it, like, like like hugging me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. And I'll be scared and I'll feel it. And then it's funny because it was like I you know the characteristics of the child. That's it's a growing up. It's it's funny. But yeah, I felt a lot of comfort. Sometimes wow. I will feel scared, you know, and I just feel that comfort of with the, with my son. Amen. Wow, that's... So it's like even when he was a baby, he was comforting her. He must be comforting her. This is God is with us, Emmanuel. Wow. Amen. Hey Amen. That's that's awesome. Praise God. Amen. That's wow. Some good stuff right here. Amen. <laughs> We're on verse the first verse. Amen. There's a lot right here. <laughs> Like, think about it, even in church, and that is one of my favorite attributes of church, right? That we're not a building, right? We're a family, right? Yeah. Like, we grab the kids, they're running, like, all of them, right? Like, there are kids, right? It's not like, oh, that sister's baby. Like, no, the baby's trying, give me the baby, right? Like, they're going, give me the baby. Like, everybody want, you know, because we're a family. And so right. can you imagine, I'm sure that's probably why, you know, John was born too, right? Like, so that they would have that, you know, extended and that love to pour into him, even from in utero, you know? Yeah. And how beautiful, like, talk about even the hairs of your head being numbered, like, yeah. like if you look and you step back, like, that's amazing, you know? It's not like, oh, it just happened. Yeah. 
I'm like, wow, what a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, it's like, wow. Amen, yeah. amen, amen. No, this is good. This is good. Especially when you have your kid, like, they know who's mom and dad. Like, they recognize the voices. Yeah. It's like, good. they know. Like, imagine it's like he, he knew God was there. Like, you know, yeah, the Messiah, yeah. like, they yeah. recognize the voices. Amen. Wow. Amen. Well, this is this is great because this next verse is a little rough. Amen. <laughs> so we got to we got to see the we got to see, you know, the beauty. Right. We got to see this is a beautiful thing because this next verse is a little rough right here. OK, so don't start looking at all the men, you know, like looking at us. Like, see, look at the man. Look at the guy. <laughs> Remember, he had a good reason here. OK, so we're going to look at verse uh, 19 here. And it says, and her husband, Joseph, because it's already referred because we're betrothed. So by legally. And her husband Joseph, being a just man or righteous man, and an unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. So if somebody can read Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 23 to 24. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 23 to 24. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 23 to 24. 22. Yes, 22, and then verse 23 to 24. 23, right? Yeah, 23 and 24. If a young woman who is a virgin is betrothed to a husband, and a man, a man finds her in the city and lies with her, then you shall bring them both out to the gate of that city, and you shall stone them to death with stones. The young woman, because she did not cry out in the city, and the man, because he... Humbled his neighbor's wife, so you shall put away the evil from among you. Right there. Up to 24, right? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, right. That's okay. So this is a pretty strong command right here, you know, for, for adultery. You know, this is the choices that's pretty much is here, right? So Joseph basically has two choices. He could divorce her or he could have her stoned. Because in the eyes of him and everyone else, she committed adultery. Because, I mean, yeah, she, okay, she's praying by the Holy Spirit. Okay, yeah. I got you, the Holy Spirit. Who is he? Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah, it's like, come on, you know, really, the Holy Spirit? Okay. You know, so, but it says that Joseph, being a just man or a righteous man, chose to show compassion for his wife. By instead of having her stoned and bringing it out publicly and making a big old, you know, big old scene out of it, instead it says that he's, his decision was to divorce her quietly. He had compassion for her. So Joseph must have loved her. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to do it the right way. Even though, I mean, who knows what Joseph was feeling, how he was thinking. He must have been a very humble man. Yeah. Because I don't think I would have been that humble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There'd probably be cuss words in the Bible if it was me. Yeah, okay. Or maybe there was. It doesn't say what Joseph really yeah. fully said, right? It just says what he was going to do. But it doesn't really say what he was going to say. You know what he actually said? That that part got bleeped out. But <laughs> so, but it's you know, but the reality of it is he probably had some words, you know, yeah. unless he was just a very humble man and just said, you know what, or you know, whatever it may have been. But God knew, amen. This was not by accident. Obviously, God chose them to be the parents of his son Jesus. Amen. But this is just some, you know, some of our our viewpoints of how we see it. But we see here that Joseph was a just, righteous man. And so, therefore, this decision is a very, very humble decision, a very righteous decision to instead of having her killed, stoned, then he would just divorce her quietly. So this you could see Joseph's actions that he wanted to do it the right way and also to have mercy on Mary. And verse 20 says, but as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So now we see here that now Joseph is going to have an experience. He's going to have that time with God. God's going to send him the messenger because even though Joseph in his mind only had two options, and in these two options, he's thinking back and forth. Have her stone, get divorced. Have her stone, get divorced. Well, on one hand, she disappeared for three months, comes back pregnant, have her stoned. But yet, you know, she's only, she's very young. You know, she'll know any better. Divorce her quietly. He don't, in his mind, there's only two options. But with God, there's another option. God had another option. Amen? And that option was marry her. Marry her. 
take her as your wife. Take Mary as your wife. Not only that, the angel acknowledges Joseph is from the Davidic line. Amen. As we learned in the genealogy last week. Mm -hmm. So by him saying that, he's acknowledging Jesus' right to the Davidic kingdom, to that throne, by calling him son of David. So he's reminding him and stating this because he's part of that line and Joseph is part of that line. Amen. He says, do not fear. Do not fear to take Mary as your wife. That is, a, imagine, I got to start using that before, when I do, before I do a marriage. I'm going to start doing that. Do not fear to take so-and-so as your wife. Do not fear to take him as your husband. It goes both ways, by the way. It goes both ways, right? I'm going to start using this line. I'm going to add that to the vows, amen? Because it says, he says, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. Why would he say do not fear? I mean, obviously Mary's not going to beat him up, right? I mean, she's not, you know, you know, what's it called? But... And that's, that's what my question, uh, I have a question. So what about the, the people around when they found that Mary was pregnant before they got married? Well, that's the thing. That's why he says do not fear. Because if Joseph chooses to marry her, not only will she be seen as immoral, he will be seen yeah. as immoral. Because that means they came together and they had sex. Can I say that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We say the Bible, okay? I just want to make sure we're good. We're all good? All right? Okay. <laughs> or to lay with. To lay with. So, <laughs> but it would be considered that they had, they had sex or they came together and before they were married. So that would be immoral. Mm -hmm. So by the angel saying, do not fear to take her as, as his wife, he was basically letting them know, mm -hmm. don't fear all the, that are going to come against both of you guys now. Mm -hmm. Because, see, he has a choice to just walk away from Mary, leave Mary on her own. But by taking her as his wife, now he's saying they're going to take it together. Yes. yes. Oh, they're going to have wow. to go through it together. So what, if, what do they used to do to them? Back they could have stoned them. Mm -hmm. They could have just rejected them. You know, they could have cast them out of the city, whatever it was, whatever it came down to it. Yeah. But they didn't do that to them. They didn't, I guess they didn't do that to them. It doesn't really say anything about it. It, it does say when we were reading, um, wherever we were before this one, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. in, no, in De where were we? Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, that yeah. if it was just the, if like the man had, to, like, like if a rape had happened, then yeah. he would have to pay a fine and then uh, he would have to marry her. So, you know, and then that's like another thing too. Like imagine, okay, you have to take her and you're like, well, I don't know, did someone else sleep with her, right? Because then yeah. as a man, right? Like, I don't want him coming and knocking <laughs> on my door, you know? Right? Like, it's true. Like, nobody knew. Like, steal for 18 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because think about it this way. If, even though this happened to Mary and she, she, she believed it, she, you know, she was experiencing it, like all these things we shared, she was feeling him, she's growing, all these things. Even though Joseph is having this vision, this angel is talking to him and telling him, you know, don't fear to take her as your wife. This, this child is from the Holy Spirit, a confirmation of that. The reality of it is, they don't even fully understand it. Yeah. So how is the rest of the city and the people and the townspeople and the family going to understand that? So his faith is being tested. Well, definitely. I mean, oh. you know, this is definitely going to be, even through this great vision, yeah. they're still going to have to trust God through it. Like you said, God with us, right? They're going to have to trust the Lord through it because they're going to have to walk that out these yes. next months as she's pregnant and they have them and all these different things. And even if they were to pay the fine or whatever it may be, they're still going to be seen as those who were immoral. Yeah. So in, in the townspeople's eyes, they're seen as unrighteous. But in God's eyes, he sees them as righteous. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sound familiar? Because yes. <laughs> in Christ Jesus, we are righteous in him. Amen? Amen? And thank God for that. And the angel of the Lord is believed to be Gabriel, which we believe is Gabriel, because that gave angel is the one who appeared to Zechariah in Luke chapter 1, verse 19 as well. I believe this is the same angel when it says the angel, because in that one it says the angel of the Lord Gabriel appeared to Zechariah. So right here, it's believed also that this is the same angel, Gabriel, appearing to Joseph, and who also appeared to Mary as well. 
So we see that, and it just, it's, it's just crazy how this is going. Amen? Mm -hmm. But not only that, he says, but as, but as he considered these things, behold, the, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. To conceive is either to procreate or to father a child or to be begotten or to be born. So he's letting them know. Just confirmation, this child is from the Holy Spirit. It's conceived from the Holy Spirit. And as hard as that may believe, but I mean, you have this angel standing in front of you. You know what? I, I, I read a footnote that says, beyond human logic or reason, only an angel could bring forth this news because a supernatural event needs a supernatural messenger. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because if I went and told Joseph this, yeah. hey, Joseph, <laughs> hey, marry her. Yes, that is from the Holy Spirit. The kid is from the Holy Spirit. You mean looking at me? Are you the Holy Spirit? Yeah, yeah. yeah are you the Holy? Yeah, it's like you're looking at me. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> go to Maury, you know, it's like all oh, this, it's, 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 you know, so I like that. It's like, if it's a supernatural event, it requires a supernatural messenger, you know, to bring forth this news. And honestly, we're bringing forth the news that is supernatural yeah. because it's a, what we believe in the faith that we have today is not in our natural ability. It's in the super, it's in Christ. It's by the power of the Holy spirit. And not only that, but we're bringing a message because he has done supernaturally powerful miracles in our hearts and lives so that's where we're able to share these things and so that's why we can we can speak with boldness we can speak with confidence we can speak with you know conviction because we know and we're speaking from a place that god has spoken and ministered to me and you not because we've done everything right or not because we have all this knowledge no it's because our faith is in him Amen. what took place in our hearts when we prayed that prayer of faith and called on jesus was supernatural Yes, it was. That wasn't in the natural. Mm -hmm. Walking with God today is supernatural. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, in the natural, we wouldn't make it. Yeah. But in Christ, we've already made it. Yeah. As long as we keep our faith in him. So I, I really like how that brings that out. So I'm just going to read a couple of footnotes here about angels that bring God's message to the people. And if you're taking notes, I'll try to say these as slow as possible. But in Genesis chapter 16, verse 7 through 16, an angel offers encouragement. And I'll put them on the stream later. I'll put them on the notes just in case. Um, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 22, is a protector of God's people. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 19, the angel gives guidance. 2 Samuel 24, 16, carries out punishment. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 9 through 14, says, patrols the earth. And 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16 through 18, fights forces of evil. And their main role is found in Revelation chapter 7, verse 11 to 12, to offer continuous praise to God. That's their main role of an angel, Amen. is to offer continuous praise to God. Yes. Sent on behalf of God to do his work. But I want us to read this one in Matthew chapter 4, because it's just the next chapter over. Somebody could read Matthew chapter 4, verse uh, 11. I can read it. Okay. It says, then the devil went away, and angels came and took care of Jesus. Amen. Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. The angels even came to minister and to take care of Jesus after that temptation. That he went through the 40 days and 40 nights. And he was tempted by the devil but overcame him. Amen. Not only that, when they come against him and they go to arrest him. He says, could I not call down 12 legions of angels and they would be here? I mean, and just a thought. I, I always wondered, and I heard somebody put it this way. Could those 12 legions of angels knock out all of humanity in that one shot? We see one angel, what was it, like 285,000? Something like that was a lot in one night. So imagine 12 legions of angels. We don't, got, we don't stand a chance. <laughs> angels have a purpose. And in this place, this purpose is to bring the message of the good news 
to trust God and to know that this child is from him. Amen? Amen. Any thoughts, comments on, on this portion before we move on to the next verses here? Yes, but you know, uh, for for Joseph to be addressed like that, recognizing recognizing his lineage from the line of David, kind of comforting to him because at the time that Jesus was born, the Messiah was expected to come. That even Jesus' name was very common. I believe even Judas' name was Joshua mm -hmm. because they they knew one of their own was to be the Messiah. Yeah. So it was expected. So to receive that that assurance, I think it comforted him. At the same time, to receive it, like we said before, it's just reassurance. So what he already knew, because he's right, from amen. he's from a lineage of a king, that they, he knew they knew the prophecies that one was to come to deliver them from their own, amen. and to hear from an angel, and have the assurance and his doubts questioned. It's like. Okay, I could embrace it. You know, he's comforting me. These things are to come, but now I know why. And then at the end, he won't have no doubts as he sees Jesus grow. He will know that this is yeah. the Son of God. Son of God, exactly. So that that will be there. And that and that leads us into verse twenty one and twenty two that says, "She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." Mm -hmm. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. And so we're going to look at these verses right here in 21 and 22. So Jesus is a Greek correspondence to the Hebrew name Joshua, as Brother Oscar said, which means the Lord saves. Amen. And his name exactly was indicated. The reason he came into the world was to save the people of God. The name was given to sons as a symbol of hope of the Messiah and to come and to purify his people and to save them from oppression. Okay. So... It was, yeah, like you said, it was a common name. Many people were using that name because it was a sign of hope. By naming your child this, you were you were declaring the Messiah's coming, but it what they were looking forward to was for him to come and purify his people, Israel, and to deliver them from oppression. So it's not it's not wrong, but that wasn't God's reason. Yeah. Because he says it right here. It doesn't say anything about these because that's already included in here. But it says, because he will save his people from their sins. Amen. That's what Christ came to do, was to save the people from their sins. So when he came and he wasn't going against Rome and he wasn't doing all that they think he was supposed to be doing, they chose not to believe in him. Because what they thought and how they interpreted the scriptures, he didn't line up to it. So they kept themselves from being open to receiving Jesus for who he is, the very word of God. And there are many today that have a heart and heart because it's not the way they think it should be. Maybe we were all there at one point in time. I know I was there, huh? Maybe we're there right now. Yeah, you could find yourself sometimes there now because God is not doing things a certain way. Well, Lord, you haven't done this for me. You're not saving from me this. Lord, I still keep going through this. God. He's still God. And he did what he was supposed to do, what he came to do to save me and you from our sins. The thing that kept me and you from God. And though you and I will still have sin, but yet we have salvation and the forgiveness of sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The power of God. And the power and the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen? It is just such an amazing thing. So let's go look at some scriptures together. Amen? we got some time here, right? Yes. So I'm going to have, if you, how many of us are ready to read in here? Nice. All right. So if somebody can turn to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 2 and 53, 6 of Isaiah. Who can take those ones? I'll do 53. Okay. 53? 40, verse 2. Can somebody take Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 to 34? Uh, Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 34. Okay. Ezekiel 36, verse 25 to 27. No takers on them. <laughs> I'll do it. I okay. have a pen. So let's go to uh, let's go to Isaiah forty two first. We'll do forty verse two. And Ezekiel thirty six is what? Uh, twenty five to twenty seven. Okay. Cool. 
um, speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her twice over for all her sins. 53.6. 53.6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 34. It says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer Will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Now the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more. Amen. 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 Ezekiel 36, 25-27. And then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away, and you will no longer worship idols. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. Amen. I got two more here. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. And Zechariah 13.1. Somebody can read those two. Daniel. 9.24. 70 weeks are determined for the people and for your holy city. To finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring an everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Amen. And in Zechariah 13.1. Somebody has that one. 13.1. Okay. On that day there shall be a fountain open for the house of David, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, to cleanse them from the sins of uncleanness. Amen. So as we read all these scriptures here, we see that Jesus is the fulfillment of these prophecies. Mm -hmm. And there are so many others in the scriptures. This is just a couple. But when you go back to the Old Testament, we see that Jesus is literally the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. He is the fulfillment of every word spoken, of every promise given, of every covenant mentioned. Jesus is the fulfillment of that. And this was the purpose to save people from their sins. And that's why he says, this is name him Jesus, the Lord saves, because he will save the people from their sins. The thing that binds them, the thing that keeps them from me. And that's what Jesus came to do. And his name was because of that. He is the Messiah, the one and only. Amen. Amen. Verse 23 says, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. This is taken from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 10 through 17. I'll read this one here. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 10 through 17. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. God bless you. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows not how to refuse the evil, when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. 
For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you and upon your people and upon your father's house such days as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Israel. So we see a promise of God's enduring promise to the line of David. And he is fulfilling his purpose here. To that Davidic line, we see his promise is being fulfilled here. This is a sign that was given that the virgin would would give birth. But not only that, it says, which means Emmanuel, which means God with us. That is so amazing. We have here God that saves us. But not only do we have God that saves us, but we also have God with us. God with us, right? We know that he's within us. Mm -hmm. But to know that God is with us? You know, I, I, I've caught that before, but maybe not to the extent I'm seeing it now. Amen. Because I always say, well, yeah, you know, I know we say God with us, but no, it's God in us. And it's true, God is within us. <laughs> but how many of us know that God is also with us? Yeah, right. right? So let's look at Matthew chapter 28. It's in the same book, verse 18 through 20. Because we're going to see the perfect example of God with us. Amen. So Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. He says, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. God with us. So we know that this enduring gospel, this good news of who he is can still go forth today because God is with us as his church. He is the head of the church and we are the bride. We are his children. We are his servants. We are the ministers that come and minister not to each other, but unto him first. And in turn, we minister to one another by serving one another. Amen. Together in Christ Jesus, because we know that God is with us. So no matter what God has called me and you to do, we know that we can do it because he's with us to do it. And he will confirm. He's not here to back me up. He's not here to back you up. He's here to back up his word and who he is. He's here to back up his name. He's here to back up who he is through me and you. So you may have messed up today, but God is still with you. Amen. That's why there's repentance. That's why there's confession. That's why there's a relationship, because don't let that stop you from declaring the praises of who our God is. Because God is with us. And that's why it says in the gates of hell shall not prevail. Because how many of us know there's no church that is perfect, but they're righteous in Christ Jesus when their faith is in the church's faith is in Jesus. Yes, amen. This church has gone over 80 years, not because of all the faithfulness of the men and women. No, it's because, it's because of God's faithfulness. Yes, and this church was to continue to go forth because God is with us. Amen. It's not because of my faithfulness. It's because of his faithfulness and his word. Amen. Yeah. This church doesn't depend upon me. It depend, we depend upon Jesus. Amen. Just like we depend upon Jesus in our hearts, in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in this world today. Because God is with us. It's amazing, right? And it's in his name, Emmanuel. God is with us. Yes, Sister Lidia. Okay, like they, they, they thought by killing the man, it was the name of Jesus, right? The Jesus Freaks. So they thought we're going to stop this just by taking him to the cross. They didn't understand when he said at the three days, this temple is going to be broken, but three days it's going to be rebuilt. Yes. So they thought we just kill him and that's it. It's done and over with. But they didn't understand that it's still up to now. 2,000 years ago, the word is still being ministered. They tried to kill the disciples. They tried to stop it and still it is what it is because they never understood the covenant. The, what he did for our sins. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And it's the simplicity of the gospel. That. And we're going to be gone, and he's still going to be in this. He's still going to be here. That's just amazing. Doing the work. And we see it through all of the New Testament. The disciples were learning. We went to the book of Acts. We yeah. saw all the different ways that they didn't have it all together. There were still many things they didn't understand. 
but it didn't stop God's work through them because God was with them. Just as he's with me and you today. We don't have it all figured out, you know, but God is with us. And so we're going to come through this. He's with us. Right. Can I just share a verse real quick? Yeah, go ahead. John 1, 14. Uh, for a verse. Amen. It, says, it says, And the Lord became flesh, that he dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. We have seen the glory of God in our lives. Yes. And that's one thing that we could all witness together here. Yeah. You know, and we can witness to those that maybe don't know the truth and maybe not cannot respond the way we do. But they don't know yet. They haven't had that encounter yet. But we're believing for those encounters. We're believing because because we know it's possible because God reached us. God never gave up on me and you. Now, like we just said earlier, that could be us now. Yeah, there's times even in our walk as a as a Christian, we'll find ourselves with a heart and heart at times. Yeah. We can grow cold. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 just a process of our walk sometimes, a season that we're in, a change, a transition, something that God is doing within our life. But it doesn't mean that God doesn't love us, He still loves us, He just gotta do that work in us. And we gotta trust Him that He's with us to get us through it. Because it says to be a good cheer, he has overcome the world. You know, in Christ, we are overcomers today. Amen. We're overcomers today. Amen. Amen. We don't want to hear what he said, right? We hear what Miranda done. He said, you search the scriptures because in them you think you find life. So when all these testify in me. That's right. He is the very word. Amen. He is the word of God. Amen. And in verse 24 and 25, it says, when Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife. But knew her not, which means they did not lay together, did not have sex, until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. The Lord saves, and in some translation it says Jehovah's salvation. Amen. To save the people from their sins. Mm -hmm. That's what the gospel is all about. Like you said, it's, it's that simplicity of it. We can't lose the simplicity of what Christ came to do. Because what we do is now we shut the door for everyone that has an opportunity to have their sins forgiven. Amen. Because we don't think they live up to a certain standard when in reality we don't live up to that standard. Thank you. <laughs> I'm far from it. Right. You know, Amen. I should be the first one kicked out of here. If that's the case. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we'll all go together. Amen. <laughs> but, but thank God for that, for that word. <laughs> so imagine we could pull this scripture. We can preach this scripture here. We use John three sixteen all the way, all the time, but we could actually just pull this scripture. She will bear a son, and you should call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And we could preach that for years and years, all the way into eternity, because that's what Christ came to do. They still didn't know about a resurrection, though, right? So we still need the rest of the Bible. Yes. But we can start there. Yep. Keep it simple. And in that, what happens is now we're able to see others that the Lord came to save them from their sins, just as he did for me and you. And that gives us a, a hope, an encouragement for one another to come alongside each other as a body of Christ, to work together, to edify one another, to help comfort one another. As Elizabeth and Mary, you know, did for Mary. That is awesome. I love how that came out. That was beautiful. Yeah. Because that's what we're called to do as a body of Christ. To have that together. To be together in that. So we see here that Joseph had no argument. <laughs> he was in like uh, Zechariah. How will this be? <laughs> and was muted until the baby was born. Which Elizabeth probably had no problem with. I'm just saying. <laughs> Instead, he chose to be obedient. He chose not to fear, and he found out also that Mary, his wife, was pure, and that she was telling the truth. Amen. Amen. That's awesome, because God always, you know, reveals the truth. He brings the truth forward. Mm -hmm. You know, people will say evil things about us or think evil things, but ultimately God will always shine that light. That's right. And his truth will always prevail. That's right, amen. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the, the scripture that says that, right? You know, if you're if you're persecuted for doing righteousness sake, then so be it, because, yeah, that's, I mean, Jesus died on the cross for righteousness, Amen. you know, and it's like, and that will be those times, but when you know that it's like in my job, you know, and, you know, I've talked to different people I work with, you know, one of my things I've learned is that as long as I know that I've done my best, 
the best to my ability. And I know I can never please everybody yeah. because everybody has different expectations. So I've just learned I'm going to do the best that I can with what I have. And if that's not good enough and, you know, they let me go or whatever it may be, at least I know in my heart that I did the best I could. Yeah. And I worked the best. I did. I endured and did the best I could with what I had. Yeah. You know, now if I'm doing some shady stuff and I got caught, then that's just I'm doing shady stuff and I got caught. You know, I have to accept the consequences. I have to walk that out. But even then, God is graceful. Amen? Because yeah. I've been there too. Amen? And I got my walking papers because of it. You know? But I didn't have, it was like, okay, yeah, that's me. That's who, I, that's who I was. You know, but when you know you've done, you're doing what, you know, the right thing. It may not be seen like that, but like you said, God will bring it to the light. And here, Joseph and Mary chose to obey God over what people would think. Amen. And that's one of the biggest things the disciples said. We're going to believe. We're going to choose to listen to you, or we're going to obey God. Mm-hmm. You know, we we respect authorities, positions, all of those things. We don't just you know look at Jesus. He he went and was submissive to Joseph and Mary, and said, "Don't you know I got to be about my father's business?" But instead, he submitted himself to his parents, and because of that, he grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and men. So even Jesus Himself submitted Himself. How much more us, but we do it unto the Lord, amen. Well, now, that's a scripture that says, Honor your father and your mother. So he was honoring them, he was showing, he was fulfilling he was the scripture and the, the, the commandment, the yes, there. exactly, amen. You know, and we see all of this in here, and it's just it's just such a blessing, amen. Yeah. You know, and and uh, I don't know, just so much in there thoughts, comments, questions, more input here. The title of something you mentioned, you know, as the church, always supposed to encourage and build each other up. You know, when all shortcomings, we don't edify because we don't all fall with the same temptations. And, you know, as you said, my tricks are not your tricks, right? But counseling or speaking, it's always good to be able to receive. But uh, as, as uh, Paul wrote, you know, present, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, we don't have to say much. It's what we did. It's how we live. It's the, the little things that we sometimes take for granted. That people pick up on, say this person is courteous, so this person seems to care because he goes out of his way. And it's not to be flashy, you want to be a point, it's just you. It's just your character. That's who you are. That's that's who people know. Wherever you go, you're the person that takes the lead. Not because you chose to, it's because God blessed you in a given way. Everybody sees you as a leader, even though you want to be in the back, somehow you always end up in the front. You know, and people respect that. It's not, not because you're always raising your hand. It's because God equipped you that way. People acknowledge who you are. You don't have to say it. It, it just, it just, that's your walk. In the same way in a Christian walk, you know, you don't have to be saying, I know I study. People see it. People see it. It doesn't matter how much you know. People will see who you are just because of the way you live. Amen. Mm-hmm. Comes down to that relationship, right? Amen. And uh, walk, walk daily, right? And now Joseph and Mary would have to walk this out. You know, and it doesn't go into a lot of detail, but we're going to see a couple more things that they would do, and you know, over the you know next couple of weeks of the scriptures. But um, but definitely they would have to walk this out, you know. And and but again, they chose to obey over what people would think about it, you know. But through that, you know, we do read that Joseph was a just man, and we see here Mary as well. And so, you know, they would learn compassion and patience, and I'm sure they would face many things. But through it all, they would also be raised in the Son of God, Amen, the Savior of the world. Oh, what a what a blessing in that! So you know, um, I thank you for being open and and to the to to the to the scriptures and the teaching tonight and all the input and just you know bringing the realness of it all you know because through that is where you truly see the beauty of it. You know, it's one thing when you watch the movie, but when you know the background and you know the history, then you really get to see the actual story. And those are like I love documentaries. Like you know, it's like the movies are cool, but the movies you know they have to put stuff to grab to grab your yeah. attention. But when you read the doc, you see the documentary, you read on it, you see it. Oh, wasn't that you know wasn't that glamorous? But the reality, yeah. But you still get to see the beauty through the reality and the truth of it. You know, and and so that's the same in the Word of God. You know, we see a lot of realities and truths in it, but we get to see the beauty the beauty of God through it. You know, Can I go number one. Is <laughs> door number two? I mean, what more beautiful than? God left his throne mm-hmm. to come like us. I mean, some people, it's hard to plan from that. Like, who would do that? Yeah. Yeah. What God, what king? I mean, he's the Lord of Lords and kings of kings. 
what king will say, you know what, I'm going to die for that person. You know what I mean? But this king, this God of all, Almighty, left his throne to come to be the way to the Father. It's amazing. It truly is. It truly is. Amen. Well, thank you all very much for tonight and for reading and just being a part here tonight. I'm looking forward to the continued teachings. Amen. We've got some more stuff coming through. So we're looking forward to that. Amen. So we're going to close up in prayer tonight. Any prayer requests for that as we close up tonight? Um, for Diana, she's having knee surgery tomorrow. Okay. At okay. 7 in the morning. 7 in the morning. So she, um, she has to pray. Will do. Definitely. Will do. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
and that Father God is firm upon the rock of our salvation. Yes, Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, Lord. that we can continue in this walk in you, Lord, because we true we choose today to believe that you are our Lord and Savior. Yes, Lord. And that Lord, in you we are righteous, Lord. Yes, so Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the gifts and the callings in the body of Christ, Lord. Thank you for placing us in the body as you have chosen to, Lord. Thank you for helping us through the growth and the, Father God, just through the work that you were doing today. And we thank you, Father God, though there are things that don't make sense to us, Lord. But Lord Jesus, we know that we can trust you because your word says that you are working everything out for the good of those who love you and have been called according to your purpose. Yes. So, Father, if you be for us, then who can be against us, Lord? And your word says that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So we thank you, Father, tonight for that hope, for that peace, for that comfort. And we thank you tonight, Lord, that we're able to rest in you, Lord. Father, we lift up Dinah as you prepare for the surgery tomorrow. We thank you for preparing the doctors, the nurses, all those that will be attending her, Lord. Those that will prep the room for them, Lord Jesus, that will clean and sanitize and the instruments, all these things, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your hand is in every detail, Lord. And that, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that, Father God, this would surgery would be just a successful surgery, would go quickly, Lord, that you would come in and out of the anesthesia quickly, Lord. And, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for the peace in her heart, over her mind. As, Father God, Lord Jesus, she trust in you, Lord. Yeah. And, Father, in the name of Jesus, that she will not fear, Lord. Because, Father, you did not give her a spirit of fear, timidity, but a power of love and of a sound mind and discipline. We thank you for the healing in faith. We thank you, Lord, that greater are you that lives in her than he that lives in the world. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. We thank you, Father God, that she is more than a conqueror through you, our Christ Jesus, who loves the Lord. And we thank you tonight, Lord Jesus, as you strengthen her immune system and everything that is needed, Father God to fight off, Lord Jesus, whatever is affecting her right now. We thank you for Gabby. We thank you for the peace in her heart and her mind. And we thank you, Father God, Lord, as we're declaring that healing over her eye, over her body in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are standing that she is healed in you in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. So, Father God, whatever is needed or being done, Lord Jesus, we're going to trust you with her through it, Lord. We thank you for our sister's co-worker, Lord, as you are comforting her. But, Lord... As she said, every time in this trial, Lord, it just keeps opening these wounds, Lord. Mm -hmm. She wants healing. She wants closure, Lord. So we ask you in the name of Jesus that, Father God, you would bring this to a close, Lord, that there could be healing and closure in her and the family and all those involved, Lord. Father God, but we're going to trust you that you're doing a great work through it all, Lord. Amen. And we just thank you this night together here today. And every other prayer request and petition that was named and mentioned here, or Father God that was brought forth, Lord Jesus, for those watching with us tonight, we thank you that you've heard these prayers and you have answered all of them according to your will and according to your purpose, Lord. Amen. We thank you for this time together, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we are dismissed tonight. Praise God. Have a safe trip home. Don't worry. It's almost Friday.